Ephesians chapter 4. Good morning. Good morning. Greetings. I am delighted to be here with you all on this morning. Um, as has already been stated, uh, my name is um, Delesla de Canabru, and thank you for allowing me to share this space with you all this morning. I um, acknowledge your pastor in his absence and grateful for him for extending the invitation um, on this morning. Um, I am excited and grateful to have been recently called and installed as of last weekend um, to serve as a regional minister for new and transforming churches here in the greater Kansas City region of the Christian Church Disciples of Christ. Um, and our vision, of course, is to be a faithful, growing church that demonstrates true community, deep spirituality, and a passion for justice. Um, I have been called to implement the strategic plans of the region to come alongside pastors who feel called to plant new churches um, and to plant five thriving new churches, as well as to walk through the process of revitalization and transformation um, with existing congregations. So um, I do solicit your prayers and your support so that God would send pastors to plant and um, bring to the forefront churches that need to go through the process of transformation. People ask, why do we need to plant more churches? <laughs> why do churches need to go through the process of transformation? Why is this work necessary? And my response <coughs> is always because I believe that Jesus Christ is a hope for the world. And until every man, woman, boy, and girl um, is in relationship with Christ, um, I believe there is always a need for the gospel to go forth. And so um, I am excited to be doing this work um, in this place. Um, I actually uh, moved here from Atlanta, Georgia. I have been in Kansas City a month, one month. <laughs> and, um, and so far, so good. Um, so I am definitely grateful. It got a little cold earlier than I'm used to. <laughs> it usually doesn't get cold in the south till about December, end of December, January. Um, but so I'm enjoying this fall, um, this fall weather. Um, yeah, so let us pray. Let us pray. Fill my cup, Lord, I lift it up, Lord, come and quench this thirsting of my soul, bread of heaven, feed chapter 4, beginning with verse 17, says, So I'm telling you this, and I insist on it in the Lord. You shouldn't live your life like the Gentiles anymore. They base their lives on pointless thinking, and they are in the dark in their reasoning. They are disconnected from God's life because of their ignorance and their closed heart. They are people who lack all sense of right and wrong and who have turned themselves 
over to doing whatever feels good and to practicing every sort of corruption along with greed. But you can learn that sort of thing with Christ. Since you really listened to him and you were taught how the truth is in Jesus, change the former way of life that was part of the person you once were, corrupted by deceitful desires. Instead, renew the thinking in your mind by the Spirit and clothe yourself with the new person created according to God's image in justice and true holiness. Renew the thinking in your mind by the Spirit and clothe yourself with the new person created according to God's image in justice and true holiness. Our thought for this morning is already printed on your bulletin. Change your clothes. Change your clothes. Perhaps you have heard this saying, clothes make the man. Actually, the complete quote is this, quote, clothes make the man, naked people have little or no influence on society, end quote. The earliest known evidence for this saying was published in a book, More Maxims of Mark. This slim volume was compelled by Merle Johnson and privately printed in November 1927. Merle Johnson was a rare book collector, and he published the first careful biography of Mark Twain's works in 1910, shortly after the writer's death. Mark Twain real name Samuel Clemens, was an American writer, humorous entrepreneur, publisher, and lecturer. Among his novels are The Adventures of Tom Sawyer and its sequel, The Adventures of Huckleberry Finn, which has been called the Great American Novel. Scholars believe this quote is properly ascribed to Mark Twain. Since Mark Twain said when he said, there have been several variations on this quote. Clothes make the man uncomfortable. <laughs> clothes make the man, but when it comes to a woman, clothes merely show how beautiful she is made. Clothes <laughs> make the man. A Twainian proverb that simply means people <coughs> are judged according to the way they are dressed. And if we are honest, there is some truth to it. Think about it. We make judgments every day based on the clothes someone is wearing. We look at what a person is wearing and we have certain thoughts. We make certain assumptions. We draw conclusions simply because of what a person has on. Is that a shallow way of judging people? Yes, it is. But we do it. <laughs> we think about it. We think about what others are wearing. We think about what we are wearing. We think about what is or is not appropriate. What is or is not too long or too short, too tight or too loose, too stuffy or too casual, too covered up or too revealing, too baggy or too raggedy. As much as we might think we disagree with the quote, clothes make the man or the woman, we fall into its trap every day. And this is not new. We are not the first people to judge people based on their appearance. We are not the first people to roll our eyes because we thought he or she should have worn something different. We are not the first people to give respect to a man or woman because of their fancy clothes. This kind of judgment based on how one looks has been happening for centuries. Actually, there was a prophet in the Bible who made a judgment based on outer appearance that was quickly corrected by the Lord Almighty. It was time to appoint a new king that God had chosen. Saul's time was up and a new king had to be found. God told the prophet Samuel to take a cow and go to Jerusalem to offer it as a sacrifice. Then invite Jesse, the son of Obed and the grandson of Ruth, and all of his sons to come. I will show you who is to be the king. 
So the prophet Samuel knew that one of Jesse's sons was to be the next king. He looked at each one in the house carefully. They all looked so strong and so brave. I can imagine they were probably well-groomed and well-spoken and, of course, well-dressed. Eliab and then Abinadab and then Shammai and plus four others. Jesse presented Seven of his sons to Samuel, but Samuel said to Jesse, mm -mm, the Lord hadn't picked any of these. The Lord told Samuel, have no regard for his appearance or stature because I haven't selected them. God doesn't look at things like humans do. Humans see only what is visible to the eye. But the Lord sees into the heart. In other words, clothes do not make a man a king or a woman a queen. Clothes do not reflect the condition of a person's heart. Clothes do not make someone's heart pure, righteous, or full of love. And friends, while your clothes might be a reflection of your personality or reveal your compliance to the social norms of a particular occasion, just because you change your clothes to fit you or to fit in, your clothes do not accurately reveal the condition of your heart. Clothes are a cover-up. And God is not focused on your cover-up. God is focused on who you are under your overclothes, under your top clothes, and under your underclothes. God is seeing deep. And whatever image you project with your clothes is irrelevant when it comes to the truth of what is inside of your heart. Because let us all be clear, your clothes and your heart May not match. Finally, Samuel asked Jesse if he had another son. <coughs> he had any more sons. Jesse sent for his youngest son, David, who was in the fields overlooking the sheep. He was reddish brown and had beautiful eyes, and David was good looking. But when David walked through the door smelling like outside and um, looking like outside, and clothes with grass stains and clay spots, and the Lord said, That's the one. That's the one. Go anoint him. For the Lord was seeking a man after his own heart. And when the Lord removed a Saul, he raised up David to be their king, to whom also he gave testimony and said, I have found David, son of Jesse, a man after my own heart, which shall fulfill all my will. So friends, while so many of us are focused on what kind of clothes we are wearing or what kind of cars we are driving, what kind of retirement plans we have, what neighborhoods we're living in, where we are sending our children to school or what kind of purse or briefcase you are carrying or whatever other social materialistic status symbol we can buy, God is so over it. Because God is looking at your heart. So what if you change your clothes on the outside? So what? If you buy another new coat or new slacks, a new suit, a new shoes, a new blouse, a new dress, a new skirt, a new blazer, so what? The question is, is your heart right with God? God doesn't look at things like humans do. Humans see only what is visible to the eyes, but the Lord sees into so I'm telling you this, and I insist on it in the Lord. You shouldn't live like live your life like the Gentiles anymore. Paul writes these words to the church in Ephesus to encourage the believers then and now to walk as fruitful followers of Christ and to serve in unity and love in the midst of persecution. Those who do not follow the teachings of Jesus base their lives on pointless thinking and they are in the dark in their reasoning. They are disconnected from God's life because of their ignorance, their closed hearts, and emphasis on their fashion sense. 
They are people who lack all sense of right and wrong and who have turned themselves over to doing whatever feels good or looks good or sounds good and to practicing every sort of corruption along with greed. But you didn't learn that sort of thing with Christ. Since you really listened to him and you were taught how the truth is in Jesus. Since you have now been taught that God does not look at things the way we do. Since we have been taught that our clothes are not proof that our hearts are good. Change. It's time for a change. And I am not referring to your clothes, although you might want to change your clothes if they make you uncomfortable or too big or too tight or too dirty or whatever healthy personal reason you might have to change your clothes. In this moment, I'm not talking about changing your clothes. It's time to change your heart. Changing your clothes is the very least of my concern in this moment. It's time to change the part of you that only God. Change the former way of life that was part of the person you once were, corrupted by deceitful desires, negative attitudes, spiteful tendencies, selfish motivations. Instead, renew the thinking in your mind by the Spirit and clothe yourself with the new person created according to God's image and justice and true holiness. And clothe yourself with the new person Created according to God's image in justice and true holiness. And clothe yourself with the new person created according to God's image in justice and true holiness. Friends, it's time to change your heart's clothes. If you are going to put anything on, Put on the clothes of justice and true holiness, sewn with the thread of the fruit of the Holy Spirit, which is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Put on the clothes that follow the pattern of God's purpose and plan for your life. Put on the clothes that reinforce the stitching of God's imprint on your heart as evidenced by your service to the community, care for the least, the lost, the last, and the left out, and as evidenced by your worship of and obedience to the Almighty God. And this, this is how you know you have experienced transformation in your heart. This is when you know that your heart has been renewed. This is when you know your heart has been changed. This is when you know your heart is right with God. When you stop lying <laughs> and tell the truth to your neighbor. This is when you know your heart is right, when you are angry without sinning and when the sun does not go down on your anger. This is when you know your heart is right, when you don't provide an opportunity for the enemy, the devil, the evil one, the Satan. You know your heart is right when you don't let foul words, hateful words, mean words, unkind words, racist words, sexist words, elitist words, prideful words, bullying words, manipulative words, abusive words, deceptive words, violent words. When you don't let foul words come out of your mouth, but instead you only say what is helpful when it is needed for the building up of the community so that it benefits those who hear what you have to say. This is when you know your heart is right with God. When you put aside all bitterness, when you put aside losing your temper, when you put aside anger, when you put aside shouting, except for the Chiefs games. <laughs> when you put aside slander, this is when you know your heart is right with God. When you put aside every other evil you can think of, this is when you know your heart is right with God. When you are kind, when you are compassionate, when you are forgiving to each other in the same way God forgave you in Christ. This is when you know your heart is right. When you seek to make God happy. When you seek to please God. 
in every thought, in every word, in every action. Hillside, change your clothes. Not the clothes that we see, but the clothes of your heart that only God can see. It's time to change your heart's clothes. Again, the question is this, and it's from the lyrics of a song I grew up hearing. Is your heart right with God? Have thy affections been nailed to the cross? Is thy heart right with God? Dost thou count all things for Jesus but lost? Is thy heart right with God? Hast thou dominion or self and or sin over all evil without and within? Is thy heart right with God? Is there no more condemnation for sin? Does Jesus rule in the temple within? Is thy heart right with God? Are all thy powers under Jesus' control? Does he each moment abide with thy soul? Is Thy heart right with God is thy heart right with God. Washed in the crimson blood, cleansed and made holy, humble and lowly, right in the God, the word of God for the people of God.